welcome to Midsummer Scream. 13th Floor Entertainment Group is a force to be reckoned with throughout the haunted attraction industry. The team operates the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride, Delusion, and new for 2022, Shocktoberfest at the Queen Mary. They're here today to share what fans can expect from their Halloween haunts this season. Please welcome your host for this presentation from the evening show on 95.5 KLOS and the nightcap on the CW, Greg Beharrell. My goodness. Well, that is undeserved, as you'll soon find out. Listen, I'm Greg Beharrell. I, I do host the evening show on 95.5 KLOS, but far more important than that, I'm a massive fan of all things spooky season, which I think we all are. Yeah! Okay, I was hoping you'd say woo. I was. It's gonna be nice to be terrified by something that's not the, uh, the news. So listen, we've got a full, a full deck, so let's get right to it. We're gonna talk about Delusion, we're gonna talk about Hayride, we're gonna talk about Shacktober, brand new, oh my gosh. So please welcome to the stage, let's start with the Delusion, folks. John Braver, the creator of Delusion. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Victor Matthew, the sound designer for Delusion. Oh. Ted Doherty, the entertainment director for Hayride. There's Ted. Chris Stafford. Chris Stafford. Yeah, Chris Stafford is the CEO of 13th Floor. Okay. All right, now we're gonna go in order today. We're gonna talk about delusion first, and then we're gonna move on to Hay. Yep, woo woo. And then we're going to move on to Shacktober. So, I'm sorry, we're going to move on to Hayride, then Shacktober. So, full docket, get comfortable, we're going to talk about all things. But first, John and Victor, you brought a little special, a little video. Oh, yes, we did. Should we set up the clip? <laughs> yeah, let's throw it at the clip like I'm a late night show. Last hour. Why am I here? What is the meaning of life? There's no such thing as death. Feed the soil. Receive my gift. Obviously, it's fair to say, and it's not too much of a spoiler here, but there's going to be a, a cult theme to this yes. year's show. Can you go deeper into the roots of how you got there? Deeper into the cult, yes. This is an era we have not explored. 1974 American cults, um, and usually it's been turn of the century kind of feel, and we still have a bit of that. Uh, this one kind of evolved from, well, I'll back up a bit, actually. I, I, I started writing a, a sequel to this thing. I got about 30 pages into it and then threw it away. I was like, this is, this is crap. So, and then I started thinking about, all right, we really need to do something different, get into a different era. So, 70s, I started listening to the 70s music and then learned more about the cults and uh, just the, the mind games within that. And I heard about these characters called deprogrammers, which I didn't know too much about. And those are basically, you know, people who pull other people out of cults. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's what you are going to be this year, deprogrammers. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very unique show. It's very different, as you can hear even from the music. We never really used like, rock music here. We had that like, made for us. So it's got that 70s vibe to it, that era that we all kind of love. Well, I think we all love. I don't know, do we love oh, the yeah, cult yeah, era? Of course. And I, haven't, I, I don't think I've ever been to a show anywhere, like an interactive show, where there's that kind of vibe, that 70s cult vibe. So that's how that uh, started. My, my goodness, Delusion, uh, such a such a staple. I mean, how many people here have been to more than one Delusion show? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And if you've never been to a Delusion show, oh my gosh, are you in for a treat when you go Get this out. year? Get out. <laughs> John, that's my goodness. Okay, well, so what was the first 
memory you have of delusion? Where did it begin? What was the spark of delusion? When did that, when did that start? Uh, that goes back, I don't know, age myself here, to probably 1996. Wow. Uh, we did a show at my parents' house, and I was a big role-playing games fan. And I think a lot of people know about that, but it's, uh, I wanted to take that world of RPGs and put them into the real world. And so I would bring, I would create these stories in the house, in my parents' house, kick them out of the house, and then we ended up uh, running a little mini show, it was like a 10 minute show inside the house. So once I saw people going through and actually partaking in a story instead of just being uh, scared and, and having it linger afterwards, then that, that was sort of the spark. I said, this is something cool, like people are definitely digging this kind of medium. Oh my gosh, I wish I had a ticket to one of those shows way back when. It'd be worth a fortune. It cost $250. <laughs> uh, sound. Victor, I'm going to turn to you on this one. Sound is, is almost a character in itself at a delusion show. I mean, what's the psychology of, of sound creation for, for something like this? Especially this year with the 70s feel. Uh, sure. Hi, everyone. So, for sound design, uh, you know, we approach it very much like a film. So, you know, you got atmospherics, you got sound effects, you got vocals, dialogue, and music, and the whole show moves along just like, a, you know, scene by scene, and it's all orchestrated through the sound design that I create alongside John uh, with his uh, tips and, you know. Um, and so, basically, yeah, the actors actually um, trigger, uh, you know, each track that I create. Uh, which is timed scene by scene, and uh, that's how the show moves. So it's very crucial that all this, the sound design and the tracks that I create are timed because the whole show, uh, you know, the timing is essential. And because we start groups, especially this year, every 10 minutes. So everything wow. needs to be very, you know, tip top and timed out perfectly. So, but I also try to create, you know, really cool sound design uh, elements for you guys. We have a lot of creatures this year, which John's going to talk about a little bit. And so, having a lot of fun with that, and uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, go on the creatures. Oh yeah, yeah, we, we, we need to get back to some creature effects. Some live, oh. practical creature effects. So we got some really sick creatures this year uh, that will <clears throat> have you soil yourselves, most likely. Uh, <laughs> they're terrifying, and so this is, I'm, I'm bringing back Jim Banky, who was uh, our creature effects designer throughout all of Delusion. He did stuff like Pan's Labyrinth and Hellboy and stuff like that. So he's he's on top of the practical creature suit game. So wow. Vic is creating all these uh, amazing sound designs for these special creatures, and we have a sample for you that Vic can kind of talk through. What do you think? Sure, why not? We're here. Can we describe it before we play it? <clears throat> um, yeah, why not? Sure. So. <laughs> oh, behind the scenes. So we have. Uh, a uh, creature that John uh, called Webster, uh, and it's a spider-like creature, and so... Tenth his, name. Tenth name. <laughs> Webster. <laughs> so we have a scene where that creature is attempting to enter a, an area that you guys will be in, and eventually succeeds to enter that area, and will start hiding you and aggressively trying to eat you. So. Oh, who's excited to meet Webster? Yeah. yeah, me too, me too. So listen, you mentioned before, you mentioned, you mentioned, oh, there's Webster, oh. oh no, that's not Webster, that's, that's, no, that's from last year. Oh, that's some okay. creature from last year. Oh, I remember, oh, lady. oh yeah, that made me jump. She'll Woo. make a, an appearance this year, too. Oh, oh. So, so listen, you mentioned, you mentioned a terrifying creature. And this, could, the whole panel can speak on this. Are you still able to be terrified by things? I mean, when you make it your world, your, your every day, are you still able, able to be terrified? Or, or is that just like a doctor, you have to normalize it and be like, eh. Uh, I'm, I'm terrified of so many, oh wait, is that happening? <laughs> Actually, yeah, we, let's, can we, can we back up on that question? I think they're playing the creature sounds right now. Ooh. Okay, so, oh. did you mind if we, yeah, we go back to the creature? Let's bump it up and, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's give them a sample of the creature. Oh, here we go. So, are we doing it again? Let's play it louder.
Sam Alain. There's another one, isn't there? Yeah, we do have another sound sample for another scene. Uh, so uh, that's that next one is not so much of a well, it's not so much of a creature, but more of a um, a character that well, something's happening with electricity, and this character is has now gained electric types types of powers and is coming after you. So that's kind of the general. If you want to add to yeah. that, spoiler. No, <laughs> I don't want to add to that. <laughs> well, well let, let's talk about the, about the pacing of the show, it's always so fantastic with delusion. The moments are almost constructed like a band set list, wherein your highs, lows, are you conscious of that as you're, as you're creating sound and, and writing? Uh, yeah, very much so. I mean, pacing is everything in the show. We just think about it as an audience member as you're kind of moving through, even like, just like a movie, like he was saying. We want to make sure you're fully engaged in the experience, so, you know, within, down to the minute, we're thinking about, are you... Are you moving quickly? Are you hiding? Are you sitting? Are you standing? And all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's all choreographed within within the sound design, within the action. Uh, so yeah, pacing in every aspect is extremely important just to make sure that you stay engaged and, um, and, and stay fully present within the show. Yeah, no, we don't. We always want to have, you know, those quiet moments before the loud bangs come. So it's just yeah. important to, yeah, you know, kind of like go in curves. Wow. So, so listen, all time, I mean, if we're talking every delusion show, was there a moment that was difficult to pull off, both from a, a practical standpoint and a sound standpoint? What was the most difficult thing to achieve in, in any delusion show? Uh, with just 2013 show, we got shut down. That was difficult to achieve, that one, but that, that was a tough one. But no, I'd say technically we, we did a show called His Crimson Queen in 2016. Oh, that yeah. Like, <laughs> it was like Who a, was that? His Crimson Queen. That was awesome. It's yeah. like a vampire show. and. We did this crazy scene in this foyer where I just went nuts. I was like, okay, let's, there's a vampire crawling down the wall here. Mm -hmm. The audience walks in, there's a vampire crawling down the wall, and then another one comes at you and flies over your head up into the second floor, and then the vampire you're with gets thrown through a wall, uh, and then another one, another vampire comes through the wall with a shotgun, shoots the vampire upstairs on the foyer, mm -hmm. and then there's this whole fight that ensues. You run up the stairs, and then another vampire is on a zip line flying across as you escape into this one room. All that was happening within one sequence that was unbelievable and from script to live, that actually happened. If you were there and saw that, that, that was, it was just happening all oh, around you. It's easy to miss some things because that was amazing. It's crazy. I saw that one. And those actors had to also time their stunts to the sound design. <laughs> so that's, that's right. right. Just super Oh, the timing. Yeah, the timing of the stunts to the sound. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you have little, there's, there's a little, uh, Precursor to the to the big hits, you know, we'll add in little subtle heartbeat or a little crescendo here or there to kind of give them a musical cue to go off of. Well, listen, we we only have a certain amount of time with each yep. person we're going to talk to today, but we do want to open it up a little on delusion for some Q and A. Does anyone have a question? Put your hands up. There's one. Question was on location. Where where is it going to be? Past yeah, where is it? Pomona. Uh, yes, it's it's in the same location it was last year. All new show. Ooh, I love that spot. Any any other? My eyes aren't good, so. I know. I get it. Feel oh, oh, there's one. Sorry, just shout out. I have a question. When are uh, tickets going on sale? So when are tickets going on sale? Tickets, yeah. Uh, in a week, I think around August fifth. I think somewhere around there. Yeah, I think August fifth, sixth. Is this on? Yeah. Um, if you guys haven't, visit enterdelusion.com. You can sign up via email and text message, and they'll notify you exactly when tickets are going on sale. And I would highly recommend you do that. There's actually a, a display in the lobby as well that has a QR code that'll take you there, and you can scan it and get notified exactly when tickets are going on sale. But it's very, very soon, probably within the next week. Yeah, it's a real thing to, to get tickets to Delusion. I mean, if you go into any of the forums, people are in there talking about, oh my god, did you get them? Did you score them? Yeah. Any other questions? I thought I saw one up here. Oh, there's one. Question was, what kind of music you listening to as you're creating? A lot. <laughs> a lot. Uh, yeah, we have a, I have a Spotify playlist that's all like psychedelic. It says Delusion, Valley of Hollows, Psychedelic, Rock, all that stuff from like, what's that, Steely Dan, like, yeah. listen, listen, like 
Yeah. Just every every psych rock you can possibly imagine is a constantly. As I was writing it too, I'm listening to it constantly. And that was an era that I wasn't big into in terms of music. So now I'm listening to it constantly, and I'm feeling a bit cultish. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, people don't know this about John. He's a fantastic guitar player. He stopped by the show one time, and he ran through a song, a full Rush song on the guitar. Oh, yeah. It's unbelievable. Awesome. Yeah. What now? Don't be bad. <laughs> Thank you. So listen. John and Victor, you have a special surprise for everyone here, right? Oh yeah, that's right, we do. Um, so these tickets, as you said, are kind of hard to come by, and this is the first time we've ever done this. This is like a $280 value. But we have, uh, for you, sir, for two special people, um, there is a secret ticket somewhere in here, perhaps under your seat. Woo, here okay. we go. Um, oh my god, this looks like a mecca. <laughs> Who's got it? Shout out who's got to find it. Let's see. It's a VIP backstage pass. Oh, who's got that chaos. Stand up if you who's got, got it. it. Who's got it? Who's got it? All right! All right! Yeah. Woo! Oh, very exciting. Congratulations. That is so cool. Have you ever been to Delusion? Yes. Uh, Oh, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna have some fun with you. Oh, congratulations! That's awesome. Okay. All right, we've got to switch gears. I mean, we can talk about delusion all day. We can talk about hayride all day. We can talk about checked over all day. But we have to. We only have a certain amount of time in here. So let's move to hayride. Ted Doherty. There he is. Okay, Ted. So let's just start. Oh, we're gonna do this. Okay, Ted, so Midnight Falls, it's growing, it's changing, always it seems. What's new in town? Well, first off, hi everybody. Hi. Um, well, if you've been to the LA Haunted Hayride over the past couple of years, you have visited a strange town named Midnight Falls. And, well, if you didn't know, Midnight Falls is strange because it's always celebrating its 13th annual Halloween festival. It's always Halloween night in Midnight Falls, yeah. and it's always 1985. So despite those various issues, uh, things around town are sort of changing and kind of morphing, and some of those changes are reflected in the town residents. Sometimes the changes are reflected in the local businesses, sometimes in the uh, various neighborhoods. Uh, but one neighborhood is, is, is certainly returning, which is, of course, Trick or Treat. Yes. So this is something uh, very near and dear to, to our heart. Uh, the, Trick or Treat's been an attraction uh, at the Hayride for long before we were involved, and we loved it, and it certainly fits into the world of Midnight Falls. This is where people can really visit uh, the, the, the local residents in, at their, uh, in their neighborhoods, see how the residents of Midnight Falls are uh, celebrating Halloween, and so uh, this is an opportunity to interact with some of those uh, 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 folks in the neighborhood and have some fun uh, celebrating Halloween and of course things are a little bit off in Midnight Falls in their neighborhood so uh, there are some uh, different changes that we can expect uh, this season but some of the local businesses uh, yeah. are seeing uh, some of these mutations uh, one of these businesses is very near and dear to my heart the good old Midnight Mortuary and, uh, well, listen to the uh, Business has been good at the Midnight Mortuary. Uh, they've been uh, very busy. Unfortunately, though, the, uh, uh, some of the employees have gone missing, and so the mortician has his hands full, uh, picking up some of the extra legwork, uh, doing some extra burying out back in the cemetery. But the problem is, uh, some of what he is burying is popping back up. And so, uh, listen, the rest of the town residents are more than happy to see their long-lost friends uh, returning and visiting, but those friends 
All right, well, they're a little bit different. And so uh, the mortician has got a big problem on his hands. He's got a major uh, pest infestation that he's got to take care of right away because we know what happens when the undead are let loose. And so that's what we're going to see in the Midnight Mortuary Evil Earth this year. So we're really excited about that. And there is yet another uh, local what? business that we're going to be able to... Uh, visit and and uh, we haven't seen this before um but it's been there for a really long time on the outskirts of town and it's the old midnight falls meat and packing warehouse oh. yeah uh, back in the day uh, this was a hustling bustling business uh happy employees uh bringing great business to the town but uh lately things have kind of fallen off a little bit uh, it's seen better days. Uh, it's a little dark there. It's a little dingy. I'm not even sure it's in business anymore. Um, uh -oh. So uh, the, the spirit of, of Halloween has cast its shadow over the uh, the warehouse to help clean things up. And we thought, well, hey, what better uh, cleaning crew than just a, a, a massive onslaught of terrifying killer clowns in a laughter house? Yeah. Smart so, choice. this is uh, going to be replacing the Dead End Diner, if anybody remembers that. And, uh, yes, but, uh, well, they're going to have to face these terrifying clowns running amok in the disgusting Midnight Falls Meat and Packing Warehouse. So, those are a couple of things that we could see in our local businesses. And, of course, things are always changing and mutating, and mutating in uh, the actual hayride itself, the main attraction, but we're not going to spill those beans just yet. In fact, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of uh, the, the residents in Town Square. Have anybody, has anybody ever met any of our residents in the oh, Midnight yeah. Falls Town Square? We love them so much. I adore each and every single one of them. To me, they've always really been sort of the, the heart of the Midnight Falls. What? Uh, what do you mean the heart of Midnight Falls? Oh, oh, oh no. It's Mayor Monty Revolta from Midnight Falls. Here we go. It's only encouraging him. You heard it here. Thank you for that thunderous standing ovation. You didn't have to, and you didn't. <laughs> what do you mean the heart of Midnight Falls, Teddy? Don't you mean the fart of Midnight Falls? <laughs> we all know the reason you come there, to see me, am I right? Yeah, and as a special treat for all of you, by me, not by these losers. Under your seats right now, look under your seats. Take to the bottom of your seat, go ahead. Everybody look, under your seats. Everybody look. Get up, yeah, turn those lights up. Look under your seats. Take to your bottom of your seats. It's a season pass. Get under there. If you know, look, you idiots, there's nothing under there. Oh, Mayor. Mayor. What's tomorrow? That is, oh. Anyways, let me just say this. It's such a treat to be here in front of all you mouth breathers, foot smellers. Oh, come on. Idiots, geeks. Oh, Mayor, come on. And, uh, by the looks of this crowd, I'm pretty sure you're not allowed 50 yards from churches, schools, and parks. Oh, come on. And that's just a panel. Oh, man. Come on. Anyways, I do have some news to announce, if it's okay. And I do want to say thank you for dressing up this evening. Oh, jeez. All right, drum roll, please. That was the worst drum roll ever. <laughs> Glad you didn't get a season pass. And I mean this from the bottom of my unbeating heart. Midsummer scream! I, and I mean this, I'm amazed and I'm so glad to be obligated to be back at the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride, everyone. Thank you. When I mean obligated, I mean contractually obligated. It's a whole thing with community service I don't want to talk about. But you heard it here, way better than a gender reveal, am I right? Anything else? No, no I mean, it, We're good. Uh, yeah, we're... All right, you're well, good, I'm good. It's me, the late Monty Revolta. And Kurt Rainey, Mayor of Midnight Falls, bidding you adieu. Ah, <laughs> Mayor Monty Revolta. He's got my vote. Let me just say this. I'd love to stay, but I'd rather go. 
Oh, well, that was... Okay. Oh, one more thing. Oh, here we go. I'm not joking. I really got to get out of here. I have a Brazilian wax. Oh. And it takes forever. Those poor ladies. No, come on. There. Rip. Oh, one more thing before oh, I leave. Okay. Okay. And I say this on all of our behalf. I really do mean this. In the summer screen. Can you guys speed up this panel? It's taking forever. Oh, come on, man. No, seriously, it's longer than the Johnny Depp trial. Oh, oh man, shut up! Oh, man, shut up! Too soon, man. And I'll see you in Midnight Fall! <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> okay, so one more time for Mayor Monte Revolta, because I mean, come on. So you gotta go see him, him and Hayride. But we still have more stuff to talk about with Hayride. I mean, my goodness, the storylines for Hayride, some are huge, some are small, and you can watch them thread throughout all of Midnight Falls. Where, where do ideas like that come from? I mean, is it a middle of the night thing? You wake up and scribble something down? Is it just stuck in traffic? Well, uh, a little bit of everything, really. I mean, for, for starters, you know, we really kind of studied uh, just Small town USA, you know, in the Midwest, East Coast, you know, big fan of like the Andy Griffith show, Mayberry, oh. that kind of stuff. And using that as sort of the foundation of what the, the of what Midnight Falls would have been had Halloween not taken over. And so uh, I think we match that with sort of all of our like love of that childlike joy of, of Halloween, traditional Halloween, as well as scary Halloween and kind of put that over this small town kind of vibe and so any of the the creative decisions are always dictated by those parameters and so inspiration and in answer to your question comes really from anywhere from you know the restaurant napkins to, to you know waking up in the middle of the night and you know writing down a note or whatever as long as any of those types of, of, of ideas uh, fall within that parameter uh, you know otherwise you know we'll toss those ideas out reimagine them or whatever yeah. but that's kind of how uh, that all that process works it's just using those uh, kind of basic facts for us yeah you said scary halloween but i mean as we just witnessed with our special guest comedy plays such a key role not, not just in hayride but i mean there's there's moments of, of levity and laughter in in all the events we're going to talk about why is comedy such a thing in something where you wouldn't expect to find it well, I think comedy and horror really go hand in hand. Mm. You know, I've grown up being a huge fan of like American Werewolf in London mm. and, and Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein or Ghost to Mr. Chicken, those types of things. So, uh, you know, for us, you know, uh, we're in the, the horror business and so people are paying to be scared, but we can't just give a barrage of just jump scares constantly, otherwise people become desensitized. And so yeah. we need to have the ebb and flow of that whole type of, of presentation. And so uh, comedy works so well. So even if I get one person to, to chuckle just a little bit, yeah. well, at that one moment, they've let their guard down. And that's a perfect opportunity to, to scare them. To scare them. Sometimes we'll do something a little bit more you know, drawn out, more psychologically driven. But just for, for uh, comedy to kind of help uh, the, create that sort of comedy relief, I think, is, is, is really crucial for what we're doing. Yeah, I think it's also like a bit of a misdirect, right? Like, you have the people that always want to go to a haunted event, and they're like, well, I'm not going to be scared, I'm the tough guy, I'm not going to be scared by anything. But then they run into one of the characters and they get a good laugh out of it, and they're like, alright, I'm having a good time now. So it kind of gets them to let their guard down, maybe take a little more, you know, participate in the event a little bit more, too. You mentioned, you said the word desensitize, and we didn't get to get to this question earlier, but I really do want to hear what you all say, because for us, spooky season is, you know, a couple months throughout the year, and, and then we let it go for a bit, we come back to it when it arrives again. But you all live in that world all year round. I mean, how, what, can things scare you anymore? Can, have you become desensitized to things? Does, does anything startle you? For me, yeah. I mean, it's about the suspension of disbelief. So I have, I if I'm not gonna go to some of my favorite haunted attractions or whatever, and if I don't get startled or scared, then it's like, well, it's not as much fun anymore. So that's why, I, like, especially going to places like Delusion, like, yeah. it's like a lot of times I don't want to know any spoilers or anything like that. So that way I can go in and live that adventure and really be able to, to soak that in. Same thing as any other different Halloween events or whatever. I try to go in and have fun with it. I mean, it's not like 
getting terrified of them as like real monsters, but it's just about kind of letting the guard down and having fun. So I think, uh, for at least for me, that's something that I, I try to really kind of always hold on to just a yeah. little bit. So that way, when I'm writing and creating this stuff, I want to make people feel the way that I felt, you know, going through these different attractions through the years. Oh, yeah, Chris, I echo what Ted said about, um, I was a big Delusion fan, I think I spoke on this last year, before um, being involved as a producer and working with John. And uh, one of the most difficult thing was the fact that I read the script last year and I knew, you know, essentially what was coming. I told John, I'm like, wow, man, this sucks. Like, I'm never going to get to experience this again the way that I did. So, uh, I don't know, this year, John, surprise him, just skipping every other page so that I can enjoy it again. But uh, what scares me, big chicken, you turn the lights out and put me in darkness, I'm afraid no matter what. So, walking through a haunted house, the lights go out, I'm I thought you were saying grabbing a big chicken. I was like, how big is this chicken? Oh my god. Yeah. I'm curious what scares Braver, though, in his twisted mind. Oh, John, what scares you? Oh, well, I mean, I was a stuntman for a long time, so, like, I get scared to death just doing these things, falling off buildings and crashing cars and stuff like this. That, that stuff terrifies me. I'm scared right now on this stage. But no. I'm just I went with dark, he goes with jumping off buildings. I know. <laughs> That's the real scare. But I, I'm, I am a scaredy guy. Like, I remember we had uh, Jackie Credifield, who, used to, who works here. She uh, would scare me constantly at the at delusion. She just, just going around a corner, pot, like jump scares like that. I, I'm such a scaredy cat. I'm so easily frightened. So yes, I still, it's not, I'm not desensitized to it. Like, I still, I, I freak out over the tiniest little things all the time. So I've, I'm, I'm still terrified of things. I think, but when it comes to like horror for me, like delusion especially, is more psychological horror. Not so much the jump scare. We take care of that with, you know, with all yeah. the other 13th floor properties and everything. This one's just more of the lingering fear. I want people to leave and not sleep very well. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't imagine what you'd see during an ink blot test. That would be something. <laughs> So listen, I want to talk a little bit about flow, because the flow of all these events, it works so well, and I can't even really wrap my head around how you do that with that many people. I mean, how, how, does, that, how does that work? How does it... We do it very adequately, on <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I think for, at least speaking for the Hayride, you know, we're, we're very grateful for a wonderful operations team that really kind of yeah. is, is addressing that constantly. We're dealing with, with uh, the tractors and and, and drivers and stuff, and we're getting a lot of people through the uh, the attraction, and so it, it's it's a huge beast and, and a wonderful operations team that are always kind of working on adjusting things, and certainly don't want to sacrifice the show. But I mean, that's a very large scale. Every one of these attractions have to address throughput in its own sort of way. A delusion is a pulsed experience as well, yeah. and so uh, you know. So I think it, 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 even our walkthrough attractions, we're still working on on, on always uh, adjusting the flow to make sure we're giving the, the folks the, the the best show possible. A little bit of trivia as we look at tractors here. Is anybody here for, really familiar with tractors? What a question. Yeah. <laughs> I was not at all familiar with tractors, and tractors do something called regen. Is anybody familiar with that? No. Okay, so what tractors do is during the middle of the night sometimes, they have to decide that they need to go into regen mode, which means they stop right where they are and go through a regen cycle to take some amount of time. But the, the fun thing about it is they don't ever warn you that that's going to happen. It's not timed in a certain way that you can figure it out. So. Uh, yeah, it creates, some, it, 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 it creates some fun times, you know, to, to these guys' point when you're trying to get all of you guys through on a busy Saturday <laughs> night, but... It sounds like the tracks is like a union worker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my break. Let's we'll take a break. <laughs> Talk to the other one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, with Hayride especially, like, it, it's so fascinating to me that there, when I go to Hayride, there's, there's, there's moments that... I'm expect, like, I, expecting, I want to hear a chainsaw at some point, you know, and that's always so great. And then there's always new moments where I'm like, well, they did that? What, what are they doing here? I mean, how, how conscious is that effort to come up with the new moments, the, the things that will, that will change? Um, well, we're very conscious of it. I mean, uh, I've been attending the Hayride for, for many years, realized that, you know, that it's, it's uh, such a L.A. kind of, staple yeah. and and you know as, as storytellers i think it's you know imperative that we're always watching our audience 
and really kind of studying and, and, and making sure that we're always providing uh, some new element because we have so many repeat visitors that uh, we would need to make things fresh for them. But we're talking about different narratives and things like that. We can't uh, go so deep dive that, that a person right off the street for the yeah. very first time visiting the, the hayride, they can't uh, digest the information. So we want to make sure it, the, the narratives and all that stuff flow really well for, for folks who uh, have been visiting us for years all the way to the people who are discovering us for the first time. So it's really important to keep things fresh and new for those repeat customers, but yeah. uh, but clear for, for the new. Yeah, delicate balance. Ones. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there, there was, as some of you may know, there was a very conscious effort made in, in 2019 to create Midnight Falls and to create the actual place that you're going to when you're going to Hayride so that that way every year to Ted's point we can add those new elements, new businesses, new characters and uh, kind of keep that story fresh and that was definitely a, a conscious thought process that we could you know build on it each year. Was, was Midnight Falls always the, the town name? Did you bounce a couple of others out there? Can you share them? Did. I don't. I don't know if you remember any of them. I remember them, but I'm not going to share them. But, I, <laughs> but no, we went through a lot, and uh, but once uh, we landed on Midnight Falls, we're like, that's, that's it. The one. Yeah. Yeah. I remember talking about it, and and we were talking about how it would be the town name, but it also had a, a different meaning with Midnight Falls as well as the, uh. just being a town name. So. You know what's so great about about every event we're discussing is is and I mean I'm certain Shacktober will be this way as well. There's almost this cohesiveness because it feels like very familial. Like, do you get a lot of people returning that want to be involved with delusion and want to be involved with hayriding? And I want to work this again. I want to. Wow, give me a part again. Do you get that? Yeah, absolutely. For us, yeah, I think it, for for both not, not only our employees but certainly the guests, they want to come back and and and, and revisit and especially interact with the different characters. So that way they can, because those characters uh, actually hold the secrets to Midnight Falls and mm -hmm. why it's this way. And so the more folks interact with these uh, different townsfolk, uh, the, the more they'll they they'll learn. And so some. Uh, of our, our guests have turned more into fans and really kind of uh, taking part in that. So it's been fun to see that. Yeah, yeah. I think as we move forward, some of the new uh, elements that will be added will also get added around those characters that have become fan favorites and kind of wrap them around other parts of the event still as well. Yeah, and John, you get a lot of people, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, over the eight seasons, when I will be eight seasons here, we've had over about 50 original characters in the Delusion show. And it's funny, as you guys were talking, I just thought about this idea of like, sort of a, a Delusion land, you know, <laughs> where you have all the different 50 characters from all the different shows kind of interacting in different ways. And I Ooh, thought that'd be kind of for that. Yeah, I thought that'd be fun. But um, yeah, we have a lot of, Delusion's uh, very familial, as, as you said. Yeah. It's, it's, we have a lot of um, actors. We, we pride ourselves on real high quality actors. So, because there's a lot of interactive moments and they have to think on their feet uh, and really, unfold the story as they're trying to corral people as well too so they're pretty talented but they want to come back because it's such a visceral incredible experience to be such you know face to face with intimate groups at a time and it's it's there's no other acting experience like it so that's why we have people just dying to to perform in it yeah that's what's so, so fascinating about about delusion hey right i'm, I'm certain checked over as well it feels like you're in that world it doesn't feel like you're witnessing a show you're actually there i mean it, anyone who's attended you would agree <coughs> Thank you. Not I, all I, would agree. I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Well, okay, listen, we don't have much how much time we have. I'm keeping an eye on the clock because we only have a little bit of time and I want to get to everything. So we gotta move on to Shacktober. And there's a little video, right? We got a video. We got a video, yep. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. What's up, Long Beach, and welcome to Mid Summer Screen. This year, I am taking over Southern California for my own twist on Halloween at Shacktober with the historic Queen Mary as the backdrop, Shacktoberfest will be the ultimate Halloween destination this October. This event has something for everyone. Family-friendly trick-or-treating during the day, frightfully fun nightmare haunted trails, exciting live entertainment, and delicious food and drinks. Visit Shacktoberfest. <clears throat> Visit Shacktoberfest.com and sign up for early access. Shacktoberfest. Tickets go on sale soon. Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, wow. That is very cool. Okay, so, I mean, 
we don't know anything about it. It's new, it's exciting. Tell yeah. us how this is different, what, yeah, what this is doing in the landscape. I think the biggest thing that's different about this event than any other event really in the area is that it definitely has an all-ages approach. And when the original release came out about the event, um, I think a lot of people expected it to be all ages for the entire evening, and that's definitely not the case, as this room would probably be excited about. But the first few hours of the night are very family friendly, so you're going to have uh, trick or treating, trick or treat trails, you're going to have different forms of entertainment, activities that the kids can partake in, um, food and beverage, of course, both uh, non alcoholic and alcoholic beverages. Um, and just really a, a fun time for the family. When we sat down with Shaq and his team about this event, it was really important to them that everybody could attend. Um, so his, his fan base is really broad from little kids all the way up through grandparents, and it was important to him to say, I want everybody to be able to partake in my, my take on Halloween. So definitely an all ages approach. Um, something this room may be more interested in is around 8 o'clock, 8.30 every night when the kids start to get tired and head off to bed. Um, the witching hour happens at Shacktoberfest, oh. and uh, the lighting changes, the sound changes, the animatronics come to life, and above all, the scare actors are released into the event for the nighttime portion of the event. Those trick-or-treat trails that um, the kids experience during the day turn into nighttime terror trail mini mazes for the, the people that want to get scared. But another thing that went into this event in designing it is um, some self-reference criteria for myself. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Is uh, contrary to my chosen profession, my wife wants nothing to do with being scared ever. But she's a giant Halloween fan, right? So as my kids have gotten older, my kids are very much into attending haunted events, going through the mazes, but my wife wants nothing to do with it, but she still attends the event with us. And I don't feel like anybody's ever really focused on that element. So for the people in this room, you know, if you have friends or family members that maybe um, don't want to go to a real scary event with you, everything at Shacktoberfest as relates to being scared is very optional, right? So you can still hang out in, in, in the worlds and immerse in the environment. If you want to be scared, there's the opportunity there for you to do that, but you don't have to be. So uh, I kind of designed it a little bit around, around my wife, but uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, at nighttime, definitely more of a, of a nighttime party atmosphere and uh, I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. I think it's a, a really interesting twist on celebrating Halloween. Definitely more of a Halloween festival and party atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, that, and, and I find myself looking for stuff like this all the time because, I mean, yeah, it's great to go out and be, be scared, experience moments at things like delusion and, and hayride, but I mean, sometimes you just want to be amongst Halloween stuff and maybe, yeah. maybe take the family. And yeah, I mean, not, you know, not to sound too cliche in these days, but like, we all spent a long time apart, and to be able to bring everybody back together yeah. to celebrate Halloween all together, um, I think is gonna be a whole lot of fun. Trick or treat trails, that's fun. That's all. Everybody uh, loves candy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the older folks can go trick or treating too during the day. You don't have to oh, go. all right. So, so let, let's talk a little bit about the event. I mean, Shaq is gonna be an active part of this, obviously. Can you talk a little bit more about where we will find Shaq? Yeah, uh, one of the things that was important to, to him and to us was to wrap him around the event creatively, not just, you know, put his name on it, but as you see in the name, Shacktoberfest, um, uh, definitely some very punny involvements of Shaq's name in the event, um, but also, you know, his likeness. Ah! <laughs> Shackenstein. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it up to the imagination as to what Shackenstein might be. Um, but Best this, Airbnb ever, wow. Yeah. But, you know, here's an example of a way that we can take Shaq's image and likeness and incorporate it into something that's fun that, that everybody can engage with. I mean, it's no secret he can't be there every night, although he will be appearing at the event. Um, but, you know, definitely having him involved uh, creatively has been a lot of fun. You know, what you guys see on the, the video there earlier, was all him ad-libbing and, and just having fun with Halloween. I was blown away to see the things that he was coming up with and, and uh, how he thinks about Halloween, so it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, you, you, you said it, Shaq's fun. Like, he's just known as a very fun, big personality. 
it's, it's amazing to me that this is, hasn't happened before because it seems like such a perfect fit. Halloween is so fun. Halloween's a big thing. What was the beginning of this? How does something like this even happen? The Shaq phone? Yeah. You know what? That's a, it's a pretty common question when I tell people about it. They're yeah. like, how did this come together? But we actually uh, shared a mutual friend and that oh. friend knew what uh, 13th Floor did, knew what we did around Halloween primarily and knew that Shaq, um, if you guys have been paying attention, has gotten more involved in live events in the last few years. And, you know, full disclosure, this event was conceptualized and, and we started talking about it several years ago. As we all know, the world got disrupted there for a little bit and the event was put on hold. But uh, now it's back in, in full force and we're excited uh, to bring it here to Long Beach, especially. You know, a town that has a long history of Halloween entertainment and uh, we look forward to bringing Halloween entertainment back this year. The city has been uh, fantastic in welcoming it and they're, they're happy about it as well and bringing in all ages Shacktoberfest uh, they thought was a fantastic idea. Originally it wasn't supposed to be in Long Beach but uh, through an interesting happenstance we connected with Long Beach and here we are. And it's, it's quite a big space that you're going to be taking. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. Can there's you see there's six different themed areas of the attraction. Uh, you'll see them here. They all have a very kind of creepy village by the sea kind of feel to them, um, and uh, very Halloween. Uh, Diesel's pumpkin patch. I don't know if any of you here are following Shaq's DJ career these days. Yeah, but of course, Shaq Diesel. So if you want to use your imagination without giving too much away, uh, when the Witching Hour app happens, uh, Diesel Pumpkin, Diesel's Pumpkin Patch definitely kicks it up a few notches with sound and light and, and a, a very fun atmosphere for, for people to experience that at night. But uh, yeah, everything from the Pumpkin Patch to Pirate's Cove to Dead Man's Wharf, you'll get to experience each one of those lands as a, a themed environment with different food and beverage offerings, different attractions, uh, different activities that you can do. Yeah, here's oh, wow. the layout here. Um, but a lot of fun, you know, and, and like I said, above all, um, if you've got friends that are maybe a little apprehensive, get them there and maybe you can convince them to get into the scarier parts and uh, maybe uh, get another convert to haunted entertainment. Yeah, plus there's that break you mentioned. There's going to be that break where, hey, if you got to yeah. take, someone's got to take the kids home. You can yeah, and that'll be up. very, that'll be very definitive. You know, obviously we don't want kids, you know, there when they, when it, when it turns scary if they don't want to be there. So that'll be very posted, you know, every evening so that you know this is when the witching hour happens. And if you don't want to be scared, you should probably uh, head home before that. I, I want to run the gamut with the whole, the whole panel again. Speak on, on what you want people to feel after they attend. When they're leaving the event, what do you hope they feel? John, do you want to kick things off? Uh, yeah, that, that hasn't changed over all the years. It's just, it's, it's kind of what the cliche that we were talking about before about bringing people back together again, especially now after this, what we've gone through, is uh, I want people to, what happened? What do I miss? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Some more shack. Big, yeah. yeah, something uh, I didn't touch on. <laughs> he'll, he'll be there um, via video screen, via audio. He's narrated all of the, the scare trails and, and mini mazes, as well as the soundtrack for the event. Wow. And as, you, as we were talking about Diesel's Pumpkin Patch, I'm sure you can imagine that'll feature some select Shaq. It's like if George Orwell wrote a Shaq novel. That's amazing. <laughs> he's in your dreams. Sorry, John. No, no, it's like he's, <laughs> he's an imposing figure. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's just, in short, it's, it's just, I want people to feel like um, they've just been through this uh, wild experience together and kind of bring, bring more uh, friendship and just finding new friends mm. among strangers. Um, it's, it, I love when people come back to the show and they bring their friends too, they want to see how they react to it too. And then at the end of the show, we've had people who, who were strangers in the beginning and then they meet at the end and we've had marriages come out of that. We've had people coming wow. back with their babies and said, this is a delusion baby. I met this person here. <laughs> so it's like, we've, we've had that happen a few times. This um, is a delusion baby. Yeah. yeah. Wow. They, they branded it too. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's mostly just, that's, that's from the very beginning till now. It's just seeing, that's the most exciting thing is seeing people come out of it just screaming and laughing and holding each other. It's, it's such a joy. Like that's what this is really all about. Yeah. And Victor, what do you want people to feel after they've witnessed your sound design? 
Uh, you know, listen, I, I was a huge fan of Escape from Horrorland, uh, the video game growing up, and so wow. I always appreciated all the environmental kind of just, you know, subtleties of like crickets and the haunted winds and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, I just hope that when you walk away, you remember being immersed in delusion and that, you know, the soundscape of it haunts you a little bit, but in a comforting, cool, exciting kind of way. <laughs> and also, hopefully, you won't just remember the creatures um, you know, by their visual design, but also remember what they sound like. And yeah. Maybe that'll, you know, kind of uh, make its way into your dreams or nightmares, whichever it may be. That sounds comforting to me. <laughs> so, Ted, what, what well, do you yeah, want? Yeah, for me, it's about escapism. We're in the entertainment business, so if, you know, if we're at evening, uh, if, if we can get folks to kind of forget about, uh, you know, the bills that they have to pay, regular life for a while, and, and, and Pretend that they're in the world of Midnight Falls for an evening. I think you know we're we're on the right track. Yeah, and Chris, yours is going to be a little bit different, right? But I mean, still, you want people to feel yeah, they're in the world. I, I, listen, at any one of our events, I want people to leave uh, thinking they had fun. You know, they had a yeah. good time and they celebrated the season that we all love. I think as it relates to Shacktoberfest specifically this year, want people to have experienced something new and something yeah. different. And and I really do hope that people can share that experience with some people maybe they haven't been able to do that with before. Yeah, oh my gosh, I'm excited for all of these. And I, I want to run the gamut again and give out the website. John. Oh. Is it enterdelusion.com? We've got the Enter Kenny Delusion. Monty out here for that. Enterdelusion.com, yeah, you get on that as soon as possible because again, they're a very finite number of tickets. Uh, yeah. 240 people a night, 250 and a little bit more. So um, I'd get on that as soon as possible. Those yeah. of you who've, because you can sign up. You can sign up right now to be. Yeah, right so now you'll know time to when sign tickets up. enter delusion.com. Yeah. As soon as humanly possible. And those tickets go super fast. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah. And the Hayride website. LAHauntedHayride.com. And I think there was a QR code earlier on when people were getting seated that mm. you could kind of scan earlier. Yeah, just for information. Some, some, between some of the panel presentations as well, but there's a QR code that'll notify you of uh, early access. And if you visit the, the booth at the entryway down there, you can spin the wheel and try to win a ticket. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and for Shacktoberfest, shacktoberfest.com, you can register there with your email address and, and cell phone number, and you'll get notified when tickets go on sale. Thank you! Well, yeah, thank you is right. Thank you to John, Victor, Ted, Chris, oh my gosh. Another round of applause, just brilliant. They're keeping spooky season amazing. And thanks to everyone else for coming. Thank you. Thanks, Greg.